guys, in this video we're making a cake of Bubbles the Squid. Now Bubbles the Squid is one of the winners of our competition that we ran the other week as part of Horseforth Walk of Art. Now we had loads of entries, loads more than I thought. It's a competition we did run in the shop so we didn't run it online but it was sea themed and we had lots of children and some adults as well enter the competition so they could design anything they wanted that was sea themed. We had some really nice mermaids. Um, all sorts of different things and I really liked the sort of save the sea ones. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody that took part. Everybody did really well. Now I picked two winners so this video is making a cake of the first of the two winners which is Bubbles the squid. So congratulations to Jimmy and Bobby North who designed this together and they're 13 and 8 years old. Now if you're wondering what I did with this cake, Jimmy and Bobby did get this cake. So I'm just starting with a small cake card. This one was four inch. And then I've got some small round cakes to go on top of that. So I've got quite a few on there, stacked with buttercream in between. Now you do have to be careful if you're making this because it does get quite unsturdy with the bin tall. So I'm just gonna put a wooden skewer down through the middle just when I'm working on it, just so that it stops it falling over. So I'm just using a serrated knife and we're going to carve the edges from the cake. So we're taking a little bit more off the top than the bottom. It doesn't have too much shape to it. But I do want a nice curved bit at the top. So roughly this kind of shape. Once I've done, I'm going to cover the whole thing in chocolate ganache. Now you can use buttercream, but chocolate ganache is just going to hold it a little bit firmer for me. And because it's quite tall, um, if you use buttercream, it'll probably bulge a little bit under the weight. So I'm going to give it a couple of layers, but I'll go over it once and I've just got a flexible smoother then to try and scrape the edges to try and smooth it down. It's not smooth just yet. We'll pop that in the fridge to set. So while that's setting, I'm going to make the little artist easel that Bubbles the Squid was holding in his picture. So we'll start with a circle cutter and I'll just trim it so it's slightly off circle shape. Let's use our circle cutter the opposite way around now to just take out a little bit either side. Let's round off those pointy corners. Just going to use a small plunger circle cutter. Cut a little hole where he and where this squid can keep hold of it by. Just wiggle that so it's a bit more oval shaped. And then I'm just using just a small piece of blue, yellow and pink. And I'm just squashing them on so it looks like paint. Then we're gonna make our paintbrush. So I've just got some leftover brown from the easel. Now this is modeling paste that I'm using, the same for the easel. I've used modeling paste so that it sets hard. And this is kind of started as a teardrop and then I put point on the other end as well. And then we're gonna put some lines in it. It's just curved slightly at the end. This is the end of our brush. Now I am gonna put a cocktail stick in this just to keep it firm. So this will need to be removed before it's eaten. And I've gone for a darker brown for the handle, which we've just rolled nice and thin, just tapering it at one end so it's a little bit thinner than the other. And let's push our cocktail stick into that. It's just going to hold the end on and also it's going to hold it a little bit straighter than without. Let's put a piece of red or pink on the end so it matches what's on my paint palette. Pushing that on nice and firmly. And then we'll leave that to set. And then I'm going to add my second coating of chocolate ganache. So I should get a slightly smoother finish now on this second coating. So I've just covered it all the way around and I'm using the flexible smoother to scrape off all the extra and try and smooth it down like this. To cover it, I'm using a mixture of modeling chocolate and fondant together because it's quite a tall cake. I'm a bit worried that my fondant might split. So we're gonna mix the two together to make it nice and firm. And rather than just going from over the top, I've wrapped it around the sides and we're going to pinch it so that we will get a little bit of a seam on there, which we're going to try and rub out the best we can. You might see it a little bit. So I'm going to use the scissors now to cut off all this extra. So all the way down. And just try and smooth that off, seeing if we can push it back together where I've cut it. Smooth a little bit, but I can still see the seam. I still need to just sort out that side a little bit more but I'm cutting off all the extra from around the bottom first then I'm going to go over rubbing that down so with your hands if not you can use a smoother so I can't quite get rid of the seam on that side hopefully it won't be too obvious when we put it together so I'm just going to cover this board in blue fondant I think it's about 12 inch this board but if you want it to go bigger you can do it probably wouldn't go any smaller otherwise we'll struggle to fit the cake on 
just using a bit of leftover chocolate ganache to put on there to stick my cake onto. So I've put it quite near the back because I want the tentacles to go near the front. And we're going to just pop that on there. So I'm just going to put some lines at the bottom of him just so that it looks like sort of the bottom of his tentacles that are just showing because I can see them slightly on their design. Then to neaten it off, I'm just going to put a roll of paste around the bottom to neaten it off. And then I'll do another roll, a little bit smaller, that we'll put a little bit further in front. So it looks more like ripples in the water. So I've now got my leftover paste that I was covering the body. And it's quite firm because it is mixed with modeling chocolate. So I'm going to cut a shape out of this. I'm leaving it quite thick. So it's an arch. And then we're going to cut the shape out. Then I'm going to put some lines in. And this is going to sit just on the top. And I'm going to glue it on with just a tiny bit of water and press it down. Let's wiggle it about a little bit. And we're going to put a slight indentation in on the forehead. Next to my eyes, so I've got two ovals. We're going to press them down. This is just in white fondant, these. If you prefer, you can use modeling paste, which is a little bit firmer. Then I'm going to cut out a circle of black for each one. Just make sure it's a little bit smaller than the white that you've just rolled out. And I'm going to stick that on down near the bottom. It'll be slightly too big on one side, but that's fine because we can wrap that round or trim any off that's too big. We'll do the same on the other one. And a tiny ball of white in each eye. Press that down nice and firmly. Now just to help my leftover paste firm up, I've added a little bit of Tylos. And we're going to roll this. So I've mixed it in and then we're going to roll it for the tentacles. Make sure you've still got plenty of your colour left at this point. Nice long and thin at one end. It's fairly chunky at the bottom. And I'm going to wrap that around that paintbrush that's been set in. And I apologise, I've just got it slightly out of shot. But can you see it's just wrapped around the handle. You do have to be careful the angle you put this at because it needs to balance upright and I need this tentacle to firm up. So to help as well, to stop it sort of bending too much, I'm going to put a skewer through the middle and then we'll do the same with the other one, but this time with the paint palette. So I'm going to leave it to shape. I'll leave the palette off till I've put these in position and then I'm just going to make a couple of extras. So my two big tentacles were on the original design. I'm just adding a couple of extra small ones. So these ones won't look like they're coming as far out the water because I'm making them a little bit shorter. Or even we could do one that's kind of hooped round. I made it thicker at one side, thinner at the other. So it matches the shape of the other ones. Their setting, if it helps because it's got modelling chocolate, it will firm up the colder it gets. So you can put the tentacles in the fridge. Um, I'm just going to leave them on the side. It's, it wasn't too warm on the day that I made this. So they'll be set in. And I'm just going to add a bit of colour edible dust colour everywhere. So I've gone for dark blue just around the sort of ripples on my water. I've got the blue and white mixed together for just going around the top of the head. And then I've got a bit of green and blue together for dusting just on the edges of our tentacles. So these tentacles have started to firm up. You can see they're not moving around now when I'm picking them up. So concentrating more on the bottom and on one side so it looks like shading. So I'm just adding a bit of the green and blue to the top of the head as well and a little bit round the bottom of the face as well. Next, we're gonna add the eyes. Now, they're quite flat on my eyes and the face is quite rounded, so I've just added a small ball of the leftover paste to the back of the eye. Give it a really good push on. I've stuck them with water, but they did sort of slide around a little bit, so you can use edible glue if you prefer. And then I'm just gonna position all my tentacles. Okay, and I'm just putting these on with water. They should really stand up on their own. If they don't stand up on their own, they will fall over easily. So they have firmed up quite a bit, which is what I needed. I'm just gonna position them on the board, wherever you fancy. And I'm just gonna balance that easel, artist's easel on the end of this one. So I don't wanna to press too hard, but I do need to, it to balance nicely on there. Then we're adding our blue fondant just around the bottom of these. So some little soft little rolls. I've gone thinner on each end for the smaller ones. And I'm just going to put these around each one. So it neatens off the edge, but it also will help keep them sturdy. Stop them, hopefully, from falling over. And then we're just going to finish it off with a little bit more colour. And I'm just neatening the board now with a piece of ribbon. Just using a bit of double sticky tape. And we'll put this all the way around the edge. 
So there he is, all finished. So thank you to our competition winners. I do have another competition winner still to do, which I will do another video for. If you think this is a good idea running the competitions and you'd like to enter online, let me know in the comments below and we'll consider doing another competition. But thank you very much to Bobby and Jimmy North for entering the competition. You've done really well, guys. I hope you enjoy your cake. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.